<laughs> so welcome to today. We're going to talk about how we, Amber and myself, I'm Sonia, for those of you who don't know me, on how we Amber. deal with anxiety. <laughs> so welcome, Amber. Um, welcome to Enlightened with Truth. And I have known Amber for a very long time. I don't actually remember how long, <laughs> but it's... I don't either. <laughs> it's been a long time. Definitely over 15 years, I have to yeah. say. So, so Amber, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Amber, and uh, I've done a variety of careers from working with animals to working with people as a massage therapist and retail style. And currently I'm freestyling it. I've just been available to people that come to me with whatever they think that I can help them with. So that shows up in, in different ways. Right. usually being available for talking or zoom zoom calls <laughs> now i know you're very connected to the body that's one thing that i used to look forward uh whenever i would see you um especially when i went to whole foods and it was take five <laughs> and i would see you i would just light up because you were always <laughs> able in that short period of time to to help connect to the body whether it was just mm -hmm some points in the body or just that touch to the body. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about how you started on that journey? Mm. It started with being very disconnected from the body. So having this um, sensory overwhelm, I had a lot of sensory overwhelm and it was really challenging for me to stay present and I would dissociate. I was dissociated uh, from my memories of childhood. I had become so good at just completely disidentifying with, with anything that had to do with my physical experience that, you know, I was kind of, withering away from that mm. and any attempt to like bring me close to that the sensory um, input was so overwhelming that I would just shut down like a light switch turning off and I mean like a like a coma you couldn't wake me up for a little while any time that that happened mm. and I just became aware of it um, I noticed that it was distressing to my relationships, the people around me who cared about me. They knew there was something going on. Therapy wasn't really helping. Nothing was really, you know, getting through to me. And I, I even did like EMDR and that was a little bit helpful, but whatever thing that I was trying to avoid, I was, it was so deeply distressing to me that anytime I got close to it, I just had to step away from whatever therapy it was. So I started just when I was laying in bed and I didn't know there was a name for this, but I would just focus on my toes and then I would focus on my feet and then I would focus on my legs and then just so on and so forth all the way up to my head. And I didn't know until 15, 10, 15 years later that that was called yoga nidra, but that's what it is. Yoga nidra still puts me to sleep, but if I do it on my own, I can manage to make it through the whole, you know, the whole body. And I haven't really felt like I needed to for a while, but that is where I started. And then that led me to feel the distress that I was carrying. And I had um, what would be, a, I don't know why they call it a near-death experience because I fell and I was in the tunnel with the light and all of that. And when I came back into my form, I had fractured my spine. 
And so it started me on a more serious journey of, well, you know, what is it me? What is it like to be here and to be present? And can I be present? I didn't think I could be present for a long time. It, it took me some years to really feel like I even knew what, what that was like. And that's kind of how I ended up exploring all different types of healing approaches and then going to massage school because it was so challenging to be touched. But I found that through uh, making myself available to other people who desired that, it helped me become more comfortable in my own skin to do that. Wow. And yeah, so I was, I took very seriously being present for the other person, not really realizing that that meant that I had to also be present in myself. And so I would work with someone and they would have attention somewhere and I would realize, oh, I, I also notice attention there. And so something that I think a lot of people that do that kind of work start to recognize is that the healing that happens happens for you when you when you offer it to people wow i never mm -hmm. knew all of that led to no. you so that's amazing yes. i tried to summarize that because i can go off on big stories but <laughs> i tried to keep it succinct <laughs> well yep. i love the, the pathway to that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually have something similar. And again, I don't know why they call it a near death experience, but we have that that's relatable. Mm -hmm. um, I was a very sick child and I had bacterial meningitis that <gasps> you, normally you do not survive with. Right. I had it at the age of two. So oh boy. all of that and uh, in a coma and getting out mm -hmm. of a coma and going through a lot of, you know, different types of things that is caused by that. For example, falling off skin. So I have a lot of skin graphing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. you know, but it, it was a long journey of healing. Yes. And I think too, that it helped me to connect to know that there is more <laughs> to life than just right. what was shown. Because mm -hmm. from such a young age, I was connected to, you know, um, the body, and like for example, the lack of skin now, and having to heal through skin grafting, and yeah, you know, that that's that's a huge process, and so. It is. Yeah, it, massage therapy is actually what helped. What? Me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, massage therapy and that touch, and um, you had helped me, and another massage therapist, uh, Jessica, had helped me, and um, I forgot the one in in Oregon that helped me through also introducing uh, cupping on a lot of the. Oh. Yeah, hmm. on a lot of the um the skin trauma areas to help release that. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so massage right. itself helped. So that's that's amazing. But I have to say a lot of that did help my anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. not how anxiety may show up today, but how anxiety was showing up back then for yes. this this maiden who was never comfortable in her body because of scars and scar tissue and what the world and names that was, I was called growing up. Um, so anxiety, just, you know, expo exposing my skin, I didn't like it. <laughs> right, right. A lot of the therapies, like such as massage therapy mm -hmm. helped with anxiety for me. So. Thank you that you brought that up because I never thought about it that way until, until you said it. Right, right. I, you know, I read this in A Course in Miracles when I was reading that um, over and over for a few years. Yeah. And he said, uh, 
I will bring people to you for your healing. <laughs> there it is. And I noticed that I, I, that was my experience before I even read the book mm. or did the meditations. I, I noticed that that was the case and people would come over and they would thank me so much when they were leaving. And I said, I, I feel like I should be thanking you, you, you <laughs> yeah. know, for, for showing up for this. And uh, the, the, I think for me, the trust placed in, in, in you being able to be present for someone is, it's just a big honor. And it helped me to relax and become more comfortable because I had a very hard time with massage. It would bring up a lot of trauma for me to experience, you know, to have someone else put hands on me was very difficult. But to, they, they told us in school to be a good therapist, you, you had to learn to receive. So, so I was pretty determined and I found different approaches so that I could find something that was comfortable enough and finding therapists that were present to that and who weren't afraid if the the trauma was triggered and that's a big deal and there's a there are therapists now that are becoming trauma informed and it's really nice to see that wow that's amazing because um i've experienced the most trauma release during a massage yes i didn't know i didn't know that working on a lower extremity where I was holding trauma was one, you know, going to right. release. And people may ask, well, what do you mean release? Well, I felt a pain. I felt like an energy mm -hmm. was moving. I felt tears coming all of a sudden and didn't understand why. And that massage therapist would be like, you're holding on to something here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I feel it. And what I always tell my clients is we don't need to know why the why no. get us stuck. I'm just, I was, I'm always ready to be like, just let's release it. Thank right. you for releasing. I'm right. ready to release. I'm releasing. So yeah, beautiful. I think where there's a tension in the body, there is an emotion that we are resisting. Mm. And that's where anxiety comes comes to let us know <laughs> that's that's really what it's doing is hey you're avoiding um you're avoiding looking at something and and uh, somebody said something his donnie epstein said you know you don't need to relive the past event whatever it was he said it was not fun the first time there's no reason for you to relive it or experience it again but you've got to recognize that you're harboring a, a, some feeling that you're pushing away feeling you know the fear or the anger or whatever it is and you've got to identify that if you feel it if you feel a tension in your body and you can you can just be with whatever that is and, mm -hmm. and face that, it ultimately does show itself to be nothing. And it just, and that's when the tension releases, right? It just goes away. Oh, thank you for <laughs> acknowledging me. And then it leaves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, at, in the beginning, I have to say the mind, my mind made it feel like it would be so complicated <laughs> to release. But yes. uh, just yesterday, I was talking to um, someone about I'm really good at releasing. I've gotten really good of rising from the ashes as the phoenix several yes. times in <laughs> this lifetime, you know, yes. always going through. And it's part of working with the shadow self, which we can go right. so far with, but we're going to stay right. on the city. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's for another time right yes <laughs> so, okay 
but it helped to it helps to just be able to release it like you know just pushing a, a little toy boat out at at the water or mm -hmm. i like to say drop in your your mail off at the post office in the box and just let right. it close and you walk away or you drive away it's that right. simple. <laughs> it's that simple. right exactly you can trust where it you can trust it's going to end up where it where it uh at its appropriate destination. Yeah, which I think leads us into some bullet points that we did have to discuss today, yeah. which leads us to vulnerability. How does vulnerability show up for us and helping us from our experiences to, to pretty much move beyond anxiety? Do you wanna share first? Sure, sure. What I noticed is that there's this, um, there's an idea around vulnerability that means something, it almost implies in, in the definition that it's a, uh, a tender space, and it is, it is a tender space, but it's a place where if you go there, you open yourself up to further wounding. And I've really spent a lot of time looking at it. What I realized is, is that anyone who gets vulnerable, like when you, when you go to a group some kind of group healing and somebody gets vulnerable and share some feeling that they're very uncomfortable. Everybody's like, whoa, that was so huge, you know? And, and what I noticed in working on my own in the last couple of years is that when, when I don't have the support of a group and I have a vulnerable feeling and I don't have all of that around me to help me feel comfortable enough to actually feel it, and I just let myself go there to that vulnerable place. It is the opposite of weakness. It is, that's where you find power for lack of a, a and not power in a way that it's power over, but your personal sense of power is in, it, it is in that vulnerability in allowing yourself to just let it be there. It's anything but a weak moment. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I could connect to any form of weakness in that vulnerable stage because it right. took so much strength <laughs> right. and, and courage to even yes. step towards it, to even step <laughs> forward <laughs> towards that. Right. Um, yeah, I get, it definitely leads you to a higher sense of self yes. or more awareness of self. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was telling you before we, we started recording that I had vulnerability show up several times in my life, um, especially before I had moved to the Pacific Northwest in 2011 vulnerability mm -hmm. showing up um, for a few years. And I decided at one point just to work with it. Why is it coming up? It's coming up, it's repetitive, which means it's yes. work on it. Right. So, <laughs> I'm seeing the word, I'm hearing conversations about the That's a sign that right. it's time for me to connect to that. So it took seven weeks of working with it, but what it did, going through it was there was a lot of fear that came up, of course, anxiety, um, but also realizing that I am safe. I don't know why I had a feeling of being unsafe. It could have been stuff that happened when I was sick or, or something I've made up or something, you know, that's generational. <laughs> no, something, oh, right. there's so many possibilities, but I didn't care about the why again, and I just worked through that vulnerability. 
And that vulnerability was part of my catalyst of being able to move and work on myself when I did get to the Pacific Northwest, which was more of a, let's say a healing time, transition mm -hmm. time of my life. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting because we were on the opposite sides of the country. No, <laughs> working. <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you were in the South. I was in the Pacific Northwest. And now you're in the Pacific Northwest and I'm back in the South. Yes. <laughs> and here we are talking about this. <laughs> right? So anything else you want to share about vulnerability, how it may, how you may have seen it show up for others since, you know, you are into massage and connecting with touch? Um... Yes. Well, you know, I did, I did uh, chair massage in Whole Foods, right? So we were doing five, 10, 15, 25 minute massages. And sometimes people would add on to that, but it's a very busy environment. And the, the person who comes for their massage, their back is to the store. They sit in a chair and their back is to the store. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I don't know, every once in a while, someone would come in and recognize that that was a vulnerable thing to do. But a lot of people maybe didn't really take that into mm -hmm. consideration. And I always thought that it was really incredible that people would come in and put themselves in this position of being very vulnerable because it was not uncommon for me to work with someone and emotion they would have some kind of emotional release in the chair so and there are people who had very profound experiences of that and it's just a matter of being having been present with them you know and in, in a to the tension that they carried, or um, sometimes they would say something to me before they got in the chair. And I, I really, I think that helped me to get more comfortable with my own vulnerability. Again, going back to that showing up, you know, showing up and doing that work really, showed me the way to my own healing. Wow. Yeah, I, I personally, at this point, don't recall any clients um, dealing with them with vulnerability, more through, you know, doubts and fears, which is connected mm -hmm. to. Um, yes. But again, I have to say that the purpose of, of talking about vulnerability and the top, the points that we're covering is may provide whoever is listening to this some forms in dealing, you know, some tips on dealing with their own anxiety. Yes, yes, definitely. Because I, I if, if you don't mind me going into it, anxiety really, it, it shows us our vulnerabilities. Or if, if we're willing to take our hands off our eyes and you know, kind of <laughs> look at, look through our fingers there that I, I think it, you know, it comes up and we, we just, you know, we really want to close up around that. And uh, the last thing anybody wants to do, I think, is to feel anxiety. <laughs> It is not, there's nothing fun about that feeling at all. It is, uh, it's, it, it shakes our foundation and um, is like the opposite of confidence, right? You know, to, to be in that. And yet the vulnerability is the way it's, it is, part of the way through it you yeah when we stop guarding it and we stop trying to make it stop <laughs> then it's a really vulnerable step to 
just stop and kind of ask, okay, what, you know, <laughs> what do you want from me? You know, what, why, or not even why, you know, what do you want? You know, <laughs> to, what are you trying to show me? And it's, it, it's a terrifying step. The, the, the first time or the first 10 times or first hundred times, however many times it takes to, to start to develop a relationship with ourselves in that state. But once we do it the first time, we know we can do it again, right? Definitely. And I mean, that's why it took seven weeks. And I remember it to this day. And that was, you know, a very long time ago is that I allowed myself to go through whatever was coming up um, for me to be vulnerable with and to help myself release those issues or thoughts or whatever was manifesting because it was time for me then to heal through that. And, you know, I know it showed up for me because I, I am a person that stays in prayer or meditation. I'm always journaling. It's just part of my spiritual path. It's just part of my spiritual right. practice. I should right. say my own personal spiritual practice for self-care. And when vulnerability shows up, it's something that is it can, it can actually, like you said, make us close up or make us not want to look at it at all, not want to deal with it. But I knew I had to because I kept seeing it. I kept yes. thinking about it, you know, and it would come up randomly where I'm like, this is not coincidence. This is, yeah. this is meant for me to, to work through. Mm -hmm. um, you said something earlier, way earlier that um, EDM EMDR. Oh, EMDR. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly tell us what that is and how that may have helped you? I think it's, I don't remember the exact term. Somebody will probably write it in the comments. Eye movement desensitization and reorganization or something like that. So when I first went, it was an eye movement thing. So the person would, we would talk and we would find something uncomfortable and then I, she would move her finger and I would follow, I would track her finger side to side, up and down, up to the left, down to the right, up to the right, down to the left. And then I think we did a clockwise, but I might be confusing two different techniques at this point. It was a very long time ago. <laughs> And it definitely came up. So I just wanted to, to cover that. It is called okay. eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Yes. Um, now they use a uh, handheld, uh, handheld um, devices and they, they vibrate in the hands mm -hmm. and probably from some of my own experience, I would say that it might be difficult to get some people to track, or maybe if someone uh, doesn't have the visual capability of, of following a finger, then having these handheld devices is really helpful. And what it does is it moves you from the left brain to the right brain, left brain to the right brain, while you're looking at, at whatever it is. And, and then you're able to integrate your experience in a pretty peaceful way. Okay. And so it's, it's actually included in a number of other therapies, this left, right brain mm -hmm. awesome. approach. It must have been meant for someone to hear that because it had me go, I, the spirit had me go back to, to mentioning that. Thank you. Right. So maybe that will be a tool that helps someone who hears this. And right. to that anxiety, we've talked about vulnerability and then um, we, we're, we're gonna move into acceptance. <laughs> yes. Acceptance. <laughs> um, go for it, go first. 
Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really hard to accept something that's uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Um, but when I started to just, okay, I'm feeling anxiety. And by the way, I do still experience anxiety or have still experienced anxiety up to recently. So it doesn't mean that anxiety is gone from my life, you know, that I talk about these things and they have helped tremendously. But, you know, anxiety shows up to let us know that we need to pay attention to something. So I think that just accepting that there's something that I'm not seeing and I'm, I don't want to look at it for who knows why. Um, so the body gets energy builds up around it. And that energy is anxiety, right? And it's, and so we're, and that's uncomfortable. So then we further try to avoid it, which ramps the anxiety up even more. So the very first thing is just kind of accepting, okay, this is not fun. You know, I don't know where it came from. It came out of nowhere. Obviously, I don't want to look at something. And for me, just that matter of factness of it, like there's anxiety. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want to look at something. I don't know what that is and just accepting that as a just as a simple fact of my experience and but i think you touched on earlier like okay well my my feet are on a, on the floor my my butt's on a chair or maybe i'm standing whatever it is the air is blowing on my skin um, the sun is shining on my face whatever it is just noticing those facts and just noticing those facts is an acceptance. It's an acceptance of where I am in this moment. And um, sometimes I would also look at the, the anxiety will come with some narrative, some crazy thought wheel, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, about a situation that's going on in my life. And I will go back and forth between, okay, I'm having these thoughts and there are uncomfortable feelings, but there are thoughts and there are feelings and the two are not the same. They aren't. You have thoughts, you have feelings. Those thoughts definitely, they're like poking at you, right? Kind of needling you and generating more feelings. But if, if, I could go back and forth between the two and just notice huh, the thoughts there and the feeling is getting worse because of this thought wheel. And um, some people have really great luck with Byron Katie's doing the work and asking those four questions. Um, I find it um, that I navigate that better in a condensed version for just it's the way my brain works, but it, it's still doing the work, but noticing the, the worrisome thought and asking myself, is it, is it true? You know, is this really true? And then, well, where would I be without, without that? If that's not what I was thinking right now, what, where would I be? And it can be really helpful in clearing that. Yeah, for you know, for dealing it, with anxiety. bringing you to accept, bringing you to acceptance, right? Yeah, because there's so many so many things happening during that anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's, it's this is uh, for me. It's just recognizing, and this is something I've had to learn since becoming a mom. Um, Ooh. Because right. my anxiety now shows up different. My anxiety is, you know, I don't want anything happening to my child or, you know, me being like a disical or not attentive enough and right. you know, whatever that fear is that is yes. that, to us, that maternal 
um, innate fear that we get. And so my anxiety now is, okay, I'm sitting down or I'm standing, focus on my breath, look around the room, my head's turning to bring me back to the present moment for me to recognize what's happening in the present and that everything is fine. And like you said, it could be a thought. It could be a thought that, oh, we have to go out and I have to get her in the car and we have to go oh, somewhere. Geez. That alone in 20 minutes. You got 20 minutes and go. <laughs> yeah. And so, she's three, so. <laughs> which, you know, um, it, it, it started when she was smaller, so it, it's really me and making sure that I had everything that I needed. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my God, I forgot this. And so right. that, that developed and um, her dad works a lot. So it was always like, I'm responsible for this little human being. <laughs> right. You know, so. It's a whole nother deal. Like you can leave the house and forget your, you can forget pretty much anything when you leave the house and figure out how to navigate it but you forget the diapers and the you know whatever you need to take care of that child and oh man yeah it's a whole different game yeah. at that point and I have to say the acceptance shows up for me being like hey it is what it is I, I talk to myself we do not have to get you know worked up or anxious about it pretty much accepting that we are going out we are taking a trip or I used to get anxious to be home alone with her, <laughs> you know, and it, sure. was, it showed yeah. up differently. It, it, it changed, but the vulnerability was naturally there. And then here now mm -hmm. is the acceptance and what helped my anxiety over the last couple of, not even a year yet, over the last couple of months is realizing the present moment, you know, yes. in this present moment using my breath, even just being like, okay, slow down. There's no reason to rush. Um, and that really started to help me through it, that I recognized it. I recognized mm -hmm. and accepted that I was starting to feel anxious. And then why? Because I knew why at this point, because it kept happening in a very similar or, you know, oh, okay. yes. very similar or, you know, common denominator thing that is like, every time I'm doing this, I get anxious. So right. that's what it, helped. Me that that was, yeah. That yeah. It was usually a certain scenario for some reason when I would drive down to Seattle by myself, which I had done a million times. Right. But for some reason, it just clicked in one day and I would get anxiety and it started at this certain spot on the road. Mm. And I was really kind of, I mean, it, it threw me off because you're not expecting it. You've been doing this so many times and nothing happened. There was no event leading up to this. It just started to occur. And it, and it was, it had to be eight months of, like, why do I feel this every time I, you, you, you know? And then it was every time I just get in the car and I'm driving by myself somewhere, anywhere that was further than 30 minutes from the house. And it was a perfect opportunity to really look at anxiety hmm. at that time. I mean, that's just what I took it as. It, it, for me at that, at that point, because I had dealt with so much anxiety for, you know, just uncontrollable, almost debilitating anxiety, can't leave the house type, that at this point, it was just like, okay, well, it doesn't matter why, I'm just, I'm going to just be with it. And it's an opportunity to just work through the next level of insecurity that I have in the world, navigating the world. And that's just how I, how I use that time in, in recently when it started to come up. I, I did have something happen um, June 27th last year, um, the car mm -hmm. accident. 
that I had where we were on a drawbridge just waiting for the, the bridge to open back up. And I was the last car in traffic mm -hmm. and a white car came just barreling into us from behind. Wow. And I saw the last two seconds of it. Now, I wish I didn't see it at all because mm -hmm. that image of helplessness of yeah. it's it's gonna happen and then it happened it it created a lot of anxiety for me afterwards yeah. to get back in the car to drive so my, my dad he said you have to go back to the spot where it happened you have to drive back through to that spot oh wow so I was anxious just about that. It was like, right. oh, I don't want to ever go back to that spot. <laughs> but um, we did. My partner and I, we, we drove back to that spot. It happened to be the week, a week later at the same time. We were both like, whoa, this is a little bit too close for comfort, but we did it. Right. It had to be the most healing thing that we do, did to see that's where we survived, that we walked away oh. and we came out the hospital that day. Yeah, we were banged up pretty bad, but it's not like, you know, right. it wasn't um, a terrible situation. If you looked through the right. car and looked at us, it was a miracle. It right. was a miracle. And man, were we paying for it, like even a whole month later, just therapy. I'm still going right. to, therapy, you know, yeah. and the chiropractor has been my best friend at this point. Right, buying stock and salts. I have to tell you whenever, and I laugh at it, but whenever I'm in traffic and I'm the last car in traffic, I'm always looking in that rear view mirror, like what is coming? Yep. And yep. if there's a white car speeding up really fast behind me on the highway, on the road, that anxiety is there. Yes. And, and I, I identify it. I say, mm -hmm. I see you, meaning I see you anxiety. I see yep. the trigger to anxiety because of that incident. And so I identify it. I speak to it and I breathe through it because yeah. I don't like the way it feels. I don't yeah. care for it. Right, right. And I was, I, I was also in an accident on I-4 where my car got hit and spun around and I was going the opposite direction, sliding the rail towards traffic right before rush hour. So on I-4. <laughs> and I think that when this anxiety came up here, it was related to that incident, even though, you know, it's totally different area and, and, and all. But this, there's something about the other car and welcoming that other car to share space on the road with me, to recognize that we're both on the road together. They don't want to be in an accident. You know, there isn't some um, force, it, you know, evil force in them trying to come and get me on the highway kind of thing. Um, and, and to just be with the facts, right? There's a car on the road, we're on the road, my foot's on the pedal, I'm looking in the rear view, I'm going to be safe without being overly, if you're overly cautious, you can be more of a menace on the road too, right? So yeah. just to be very, to become present in that yeah. time. And sometimes it's, well, maybe I need to back off the car in front of me. You know, maybe uh -huh. my distance is closing and, and, I, and I'm not, I'm, I'm so worried about that guy behind me that I didn't notice that I'm coming close to that other guy and uh, in the car in front of me. So. Yeah, that's true. There, there's yeah. definitely triggers to our anxiety yes. and, um, I think the biggest thing, what it sounds like we're both trying to say is not to ignore it. <laughs> don't right. ignore it, don't push it aside. Um, I'm not you know, one to take any type of 
of meds unless I really need to, but you know, if you need it and you, you go to your doctor and you work through it, but also know to work through it, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, invite that spirit body to for guidance to help us through it. So, you know, right. neither one of us here are our medical doctors or anything like that. We're just nope. here in our, our, um, experiences and observations and how we you know process through our own anxiety and to to bring this to a conclusion i know amber talked about confidence as the last tip so what does this confidence look like now <laughs> um the confidence for me is that when the anxiety comes, because like I said, it doesn't mean that there's no more anxiety. It still likes the, you know, it still does occur. And when it does to remember that that vulnerability of being present to myself <laughs> is it, 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 it gives me confidence. It gave me confidence that, hey, you know, there's that, that quote, hey, remember that you've, um, you've made it through 100% of the difficulties in your life so far, you, right? And, and it, is, it is a fact. <laughs> so for me, there's just, there's just more confidence. And we have, the experience and community that we talked about the last time we sat together where someone in with good, very prominent standing in the community had decided to say something publicly that was not favorable uh, to me. And, and so where everyone could see it, right? And so there, there, there was this anxiety about how people will perceive me because this person is so well respected and for a i mean a, a good solid six months i was working on this really regularly i mean and for several weeks daily i was looking at you know going through all the things of well i'm going to publicly make a comment you know and i'm going to say I'm going to say something to, to let her know where I'm coming from or something like that. But really, ultimately, I, what I wanted was to get out of the anxiety of, well, what does it mean if the tribe pushes me out? You know? Yeah. And so I looked at all of that. I, I looked at, well, you know, what would that feel like? I explored it. And could I, could I live with that? What if everybody in the world decided to reject me because this person um, made a suggestion that, that, that I am some certain way? And it, I mean, what, if there's nothing I can do about it, then, then I'm free of it, right? So I found the confidence through that situation. And even sometimes I will see this, this person will say something and it will still kind of, you know, there's still a little bit in me of kind of wanting to keep that person at arm's length, maybe. Oh yeah. But um, I, I just allow that too, right? So, there's something vulnerable. I feel, I feel especially vulnerable in the presence of this person now. I feel like this person um, isn't, isn't safe, but something that I learned early on with the extreme anxiety that it has nothing to do with whether the other person is safe or not. It's whether or not I trust myself to be with, to not step away from myself. Mm -hmm whatever may come that is that's been my biggest probably my best takeaway from all the anxiety you know 
And that, that is what builds the confidence is the fact that I don't, I'm much less likely to step away from myself when anxiety comes up because no, it doesn't matter how present someone else is to us. I mean, it can be helpful for sure. Oh, this person isn't concerned. You know, they're not afraid. So I might, I might feel bolstered temporarily, but when it comes down to it and I'm, and it's just me, then, then there's nobody else holding that space. Am I going to abandon myself and just let the anxiety take over? And I just, I'm not, I'm not as tolerant of that, letting that happen anymore. So that's what that confidence is, that, that I can show up for myself and I will do it. Even if it sometimes takes me a little while because I'm more focused on what somebody said or did. Yes, that uncomfortable, uncomfortable you know, spot is, is part of also dealing with anxiety um, overall. And sometimes it, it takes being uncomfortable for a little bit for that moment and then moving past that and, you know, just working through it and working through it. Like I talk to minds and I breathe through it and I'm aware that I'm, I'm having, you know, anxiety for whatever reason, Yeah, but the confidence to look at things and be like, well, it is what it is. And I, like you're saying, I'm not going to not take care of myself because self-care and self-love and self-nourishment is very much a, a huge component to working through our anxiety, healing through our anxiety, right? where it becomes less and less. You know, my anxiety is much more or less but I've also grown to be much more calmer and less impulsive to do yeah. things, you know, and, and I check in with the energy of things. And if at any point I feel, for example, someone is, is getting out of hand or is about to, to do something that doesn't serve my highest good, I'm acknowledging that and acknowledging that this can cause anxiety in my life because of things that we've gone through. Right. So, yeah. And while you were saying what you were saying, I was like, who cares? It comes to the point that who cares? Yeah, exactly. Who cares, who cares yeah. what people have to say? It's, we all are just talking and I call it diarrhea of the mouth nowadays right. where, you know, there's a lot of diarrhea of the mouth but I'm not going to allow someone else's diarrhea of the mouth, create anxiety in my body and right. cause upheaval or chaos or crisis in, in my, in my space. Yep. You know, so it sounds like overall is to, to work through our anxiety is to be vulnerable, to accept that, you know, this is where we're at, to accept that we're working through anxiety, to also, I, I want to throw in there, is to recognize when it's happening, recognize yeah. it. I feel recognizing from my own experience has helped me not to shut down, has helped yeah. me not to be like, oh, I need, I need to go lay down. The day is done. I'm, yes, I'm yes. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's really important yeah. because you know a lot of times anxiety accompanies depression yeah. and um i think I, th I think i would it would be a disservice to not touch on that because i struggled with the depression for a long time also and what i discovered accidentally was i was just so worn out from going between depression and anxiety and depression and anxiety. It was like anxiety got me through the work day and depression, you know, was how I was the rest of the time. And so I would, I was just go home and I was laying down and I just said, okay, fine. I'm, I'm take, just take me whatever I like. I have, 
I have no more energy to try to do this and just, so I'm depressed, you know, so this, this is it. And, and I just, I just let it be there. And there was something about, I don't know. I don't think we can force the acceptance, but maybe if we're curious about it, we can invite it to come a little sooner. I, I'm not really sure, but because I didn't go home that day saying, well, today's the day or anything like that. But what happened was I just, all right, fine. You just, just take the rest of the energy from me. And when that happened, there was a shift, you know, I wasn't in therapy. Nobody was, you know, it happened on my own and it was far more um, effective than any, not to say don't go to therapy, you know, <laughs> because I definitely uh, leading up to that went plenty, but this moment was like years of therapy in a moment mm -hmm. just of saying, okay, you know, just fine you know <laughs> what do you have to show me and it was it was a really um impactful moment and then I took a long nap <laughs> right you know because I was exhausted from fighting all the time the exhaustion is huge and that was something yeah. I was saying that um you know not passing out or ignoring that that anxiety is there because it is a disservice to ourselves and if if we're honoring ourselves and stepping into who we are and this journey of you know spiritual you know connecting to our creator and loving ourselves more then we have yeah. to be in service to identifying when we are anxious or we are in pain or we are drained right. by anxiety and you know, not just cover it up with with some band-aid right. means that it's right. still there. And for yes. you, you know, it manifested in depression. For me, it manifested in no energy, meaning that I, I don't even have energy for myself. I can't even yes. take care of myself. And I was pretty much not functioning because my energy was depleted. Yes. It. And I was like, no more, no right. more, you know, I had so, it's kind of like I get fed up with it, but that's just me. <laughs> that's that right. Caribbean side of no more enough yeah. is enough. I'm not going to allow you to control my life. Right. I did also have a phase of that where I just had no energy to work or anything. And I was, I don't know, man, I just, I got so lucky that I, I had a roommate that was just very compassionate and let me, you, you know, just, I felt like I was wasting away, honestly, but I just couldn't, I had no more energy for anything. I couldn't How work. How did you get out of it? What did you do? What else happened? Um, what, what, you know, I was so concerned with, not contributing something to the world, right? By going to work and doing the thing. And, and I, I finally just was like, well, if I'm here, I like no nonsense. I like it when it comes to me as a no nonsense kind of a message, right? And it was, well, here you are. You, you know, you, if you're here, you're here. There's no deserving, not deserving. If you're here, you deserve to be here just by rights of the fact that you're here. And that's just, again, looking at the facts. Well, here I am. And there was something that really helped me to rest. Instead of sleeping from exhaustion, that gave me the opportunity to actually rest that, oh, okay. I don't have to earn being here. I'm here. No, but whoever you are looking at this, you do not have to earn your keep. You 
deserve to be here. Mm-hmm. And the world will tell you otherwise. So many people will tell you otherwise. And it is a lie. And I think that you know it's a lie when it happens. I think everybody knows that it's a lie. And that is, it is a, a, the root of a lot of violence and uh, sadness and grief because we somehow got this idea that we had to earn this, but we're already here. We already have it. We just, you know, we could celebrate it. (laughs) And I'm, you know, I'm not always doing that every day myself, you know, but um, letting, letting that, letting yourself be here, you know, that's a, that's a really huge step to kind of dissipating that anxiety. And you, you touched on something. And I, I wanna I wanna jump in on that a little bit. Okay. Like you can tell it's a lie when you when you automatically get sad or depressed or you're feeling drained. All of a sudden your your energy is zapped. Yeah. We pick up, we pick up on the BS. Right. We pick up on the BS. And that's why it's not good to always be around that BS, that toxicity, those toxic right. people or watch toxic things every minute because it will deplete us. And then yeah. it what, what that does is if you are suffering with anxiety, being involved, whether it's through hearing, seeing, you know, speaking it or having it speak towards you, um, yeah. it's just going to amplify your anxiety because you're not feeding yourself with anything good. <laughs> so right. yeah. like you're feeding the disease with what right. it wants and you know it's it's an energetic disease you know we can't see it but it's there yeah. it's negative it's toxic you know right. it, it exists so yes. pay attention to what we feed ourselves where we hang out who we're hanging out with um and if your body just doesn't feel good Every time you're doing a certain thing, pay attention. Cause it's also the mm-hmm. other part of acceptance is paying attention to like, for me, like, why am I getting anxious? Because I'm going out the house with a young child, you know, during the pandemic, I knew why I saw why, and I had to protect her, but mm-hmm. I did my diligence and took care of things to where it doesn't get me anxious anymore. And I'm sure anxiety is going to show up different because this child is growing. <laughs> so constant. <laughs> She'll help you find it if it's in there. <laughs> no, change is constant. It's constant. So it's always going to evolve. But what we have to do is at least work through where we're at now. So when yeah. it evolves, we can work through it then again. And we could work right. through it then again. Yeah. But we can't if we're constantly feeding the toxicity by, oh, well, you know, that's my friend. But if you feel real yucky around your friend, you know, look into what's there, pray about it, meditate on it, you know, like be, be forgiven, but we, we have to make some choices sometimes to, to change the energy and vibration of the people that we associate with or the things right. that we connect to. So so yeah, that's what I have to say in closing. Anything, Amber? Um, uh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm new to doing Zoom interview things, even though I'm available talking to people on a regular basis. But to have an interview like this that feels like, oh, more people, people are going to see me. You know, <laughs> that's a point of anxiety for me too. As someone who has uh, had, you know, s- struggled with sensory issues and, and uh, you know, social anxiety, <laughs> right? So if too many people are interested in, in what I have to say, then it 
can feel overwhelming. Of course, that's where the, the internet helps in a way. So, yeah. so, so we'll release that to the universe and yeah. ask for the most beautiful things to come to us, that it's beautiful, it's, it's gentle, it's nourishing, and that, you know, we're both in receiving the opportunity to continue to share and share love and share compassion and hold space for people to heal, to learn, to grow, to evolve, and, and even for community. Community helps us to be more healthy, to be more whole, to experience more holistic vibrations. That's really who we are until when we feel it, we're like, who is this? Right. And it's you, it's you all along. Right. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much, Amber, for being a guest. And the conversation has been wonderful. And I appreciate you. And um, I will drop Amber's information in the description below. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last time that you see <laughs> Amber. We already in the talk for something else. But if you like this type of video, please like, subscribe, share, and please comment below if, if anxiety is something that um, you're dealing with and if there's any tools that you use or maybe what we said today can help you and you already feel that it's it's there for you and this is the message for you then or if you have some other thing to offer yeah i mean in the comments i found yeah. sometimes that somebody offers something that is really helpful for someone who comes along yeah i read comments a lot because there's sometimes even just a one sentence Thing that I is exactly what I need to see. I agree. And, you know, I, I always say, I'm the student, you're the teacher, you're the teacher, I'm the student. Like, we always change those roles. I'm always learning and always growing. So, yes, yes, likewise. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It's so good to spend time with you. <laughs>